The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin here on realagriculture.com. Today, we're going to talk insects, uh, pests, and to do, to do that, we are joined by uh, Tracy Bowdy, OMAFRA's entomologist. Tracy, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for putting me on. Awesome. It's great. I um, want to talk about uh, a couple of specific insects, but before we get there, let's talk in general terms. Um, already this year... We've seen, you know, significant armyworm pressure in cereals, cereal aphids, and it's getting dry. Um, are we in for an insect year? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's safe to say this is a good insect year. Um, they're abundant. They had a mild winter. And uh, if it turns dry, we could be at risk for some yield impact if that's a stress on the crop. Yeah. A um, couple of insects specifically. Um you know, especially if it starts and stays dry. Uh, spider mites, something we need to keep an eye on? Absolutely. That's my next test of concern. Um, and any day now, especially when wheat starts to get harvested, but even before then, if it's dry, these mites are going to be moving into at least the soybean crop and the edible bean crop. So it, um, I know we're busy scouting armyworm, uh, lots and lots of wheat fields being scouted, but I think we also are going to have to turn in uh, to the soybean fields and the edible bean fields and look. So what are we looking for? What, uh, what are the telltale signs? Yeah, so unfortunately, so- sometimes it's the symptoms that are, um, people notice before the pest itself. So symptoms would be um, stippling on the upper surface of the leaf, uh, plants looking almost sandblasted, um, and, and even when you turn over the leaf, you might see some webbing. Sometimes if, if a number of areas of the field already have those symptoms, you're almost too late already. So it is important to, you know, especially look on the field's edge, but also other areas of the field, turn over some leaves, especially in the lower mid canopy, um, and look for tiny dots uh, moving around. If they're there, take that leaf and shake it um, onto a um, white piece of paper so you can really see. Mites are really tiny, so they'll either have six legs if they're nymphs or eight legs if they're adults. But they, um, if you have a hand lens, you can actually see the two dots that give them their name, two spotted spider mite. Um, and if there are a number of them, um, the threshold is four mites per leaflet. Or even if you see um, one severely infested plant, um, if it's on the edge of the field, you could probably do a, a boom width or two of the spray and keep it from getting into the rest of the field, but um, really determine if they're across the field. And if you do, uh, if they are, then you have to spray. Right. Talk about um, yield impact and, and, you know, again, control. We're going to, and, yeah. what, and product option maybe. <laughs> There's only one product option. <laughs> well, two products, one active. Um, Dimethoate is really the only product that we can use. Um, you really got to be careful not to use Matador or Pyrethroid um, because it can actually cause the mites to flare up. Um, but yeah, the yield can be significantly impacted. It is a major stress in the crop. And in fact, um, back in the days when we used to always have soybean aphids, soybean aphids would actually leave the plants that had spider mites because they could already tell that the mites were impacting the quality of the plant and they didn't want to be there anymore. So they left and left it to the mites. So they, if there's enough um, mite feeding on the plants, you can actually have leaf um, defoliation, complete drop of the leaves. And of course, obviously the pods um, will, will not fill because they're not getting the energy to the pods um, to, to survive. So really, you know, pay attention. I, the worst, biggest problem with um, dry, hot years is that people look and think it's just a drought stress on the crop. Um, but when you start to look closer, um, you realize, no, no, this is, these are mites and this could have been avoided. So yeah, spray um, with uh, dimethoate. Now, one other issue with mites, Sometimes there's a lot of eggs there in the field, so um, and which aren't controlled by the product. So you may have a, that a flare up. If you do, uh, let us know because there can be resistance that develops, but also there could have been just a new flush of um, mites coming out. So really um, pay attention after a spray. 
And I got to say this for almost every crop now that we're spraying this year, we really have to pay attention to spraying in the evening if we can because of bees. Um, even in the wheat crop, we know technically they aren't meant to forage in wheat, but they can get impacted if they're flying through. And so we have we may have a year where there's a lot of insecticide applications going on. So we've really got to try and do it in the evening um, to avoid that risk too. Yeah. Now, I know uh, you'll be working on Western bean cutworm uh, again this year. We're going to talk about that maybe on another video. But uh, what else yep. is on the on the horizon? Uh, soybean aphids? Yeah. Well, Deb Campbell pointed out that she's got a field uh, in her region that has some aphids on it. And, and I know some of the U.S. Um, states have some very low levels. And I realized there is likely a generation of crops consultants and even growers who haven't dealt with soybean aphids because they've been very sporadic lately, um, not anything like in, in years past when they first came. So I think there's going to be a little bit of an ed education learning curve there again. Um, and, and really, I think if anybody had had experienced them, realize biocontrols are huge for this pest. And we really want to make sure um, you don't pull the trigger too early. So, um, you know, they, we've got a lot of biocontrol uh, happening in cereals right now. Those are going to move, hopefully, to the soybean crop and help. Um, but we do have a threshold set for soybean aphids um, based on the biocontrols too. So um, I think there's going to be some education there that we need to do, um, but we'll try and get that information out to everybody. And, and worst, worst case, if anyone's in doubt, use the aphid advisor app that we have. That takes into consideration the aphids population. So the threshold is 250 per plant, but increasing. And the increasing is a really big thing because um, you really want that'll indicate to you if the beneficials are staying ahead or not. And you have some leeway there. Um, the injury level is actually 660 aphids per plant. Um, so you get some buffer. Play around and see. Use the um, app if you need to, but only once you've gone a couple times in the field and see that the aphid population keeps rising and not going up and down, up and down, that tells you that the beneficials can't keep up and, and you may need to spray. But in, if you're in doubt, use the aphid app. It takes into consideration the natural enemies you're seeing, the aphid pressure you have, the forecast of what the aphid buildup would be. Um, and then tells you, yeah, you need to spray or nope, hold off and wait and watch. So um, yeah, it, it's a, it helps just give you a little bit more reassurance in your yeah. decision. Now, Deb Campbell, seeing them already, should growers be out there now scouting for aphids? Yeah, well, once the, the real issue is only once you reach R1. So um, any V stage um, populations, they, they do that. They'll build up on a plant, but then redistribute. So you could actually have a field that had some. And then they're completely gone in a, a matter of days or they've spread themselves out enough that there's only one or two per plant. So it's only the risk is only in R1 to our early R6 stage when you really have to focus in and, and potentially protect the crop. So um, that's when the, the app would work as well as the mm. threshold itself. Well, Tracy, great stuff. Always uh, great to have you on uh, Real Agriculture. Stop, thanks for stopping by. And I know uh, the summer and the heat will keep you busy. Yeah, thanks for having me.